Yes, Jory, you have Prime. So you can use your Prime to do a free subscription to Golden Fox. Golden's playing right now, just so you guys know. Yeah. Hey, controlled chaos picks Glaceon. All right. But you prefer to give Ever Eevee and Everstone. That makes sense. Glace Glaceon is a really pretty looking Pokemon, though I'm not one to pick Ice types. Ice types. Shit. Ice types just seem weak to everything. <laughs> you want me to get you another Brisk? Sure, if there's any left. I mean. How fast can you go through a case of brisk? I love that drink too much. Yeah, you have an obsession with the bit. Blame the advertisement. Uh, I would rather blame the taste than marketing. You still have one. Okay. No, like, it's got a nice, uh... You have quite a few. Okay. No, it's got a pretty nice taste. Like, the thing I like about brisk is that it's smooth. Like, it's not carbonated. Like most drinks are. Like, I'm not gonna it's say... Nice. Oh, okay. What ice tea have you had that's carbonated? Okay, well, the, the point is, it's a different type of drink to have that's in a can compared to just having soda all the time. And whenever it came to soda, yeah, there's only so much you can drink in a few gulps before you can hurt your throat. <sighs> Star Raptor says, Keyframe, guess what? Chicken butt. Uh, You're my least favorite now. Is there something I don't know about? I don't know, it's just, hey, you won. I don't know, but now they're my least favorite. <laughs> See, I love what Bru um, Blue Griffin is uh, getting the reference of. Briss still makes me think of those ads. Save some of that for the sequel! No, honestly, the thing is, which shows that I watch garbage, is um, there's a TikTok where this guy is just like, this preppy looking boy being like, what is this drink? It's just delightful! And he's just drinking a can of brisk. <laughs> I got tonic water and club soda and god knows what else in my- I love sparkling water. I like Lipton peach tea myself. Yo, I stand peach tea till the end of time. I love peach tea. Well, a, like a peach flavor of like a majority of sorts always sounds good. Oh, I love peach. Peaches are some of my favorite fruits. It's It's weird, like... Okay, I don't mind the fruit itself, but I just don't like the hairy skin off of the top. You're a texture eater, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, but the taste itself, it's very sweet. You like the flavoring. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry if I shout tired, you guys. I actually did a lot today, so... Yeah. I've was... been drawing up uh, a Dops to auction off to get some cash. And then, uh, I, uh, went to the gym today. Actually, people, give some claps to Golden. He actually, he's been going to the gym with me once a week. And he did a whole 30 minute, uh, uh, 30 minute circuit training. And also some upper body stuff. Like, he joined me for my, part of my upper Ooh. body workout. Oh, shit! I tickled his foot by accident. Yeah, yeah, I'm ticklish as fuck. Yeah, you're a sensitive boy. Um, we did half of my upper body workout. I'm doing the other half because, you know, Brett has a certain, still has a beginner's tolerance. But he did, he did good. He kept up. He did his pace. He focused more on form than he did speed. And you, yeah. and you did quite well. We were at the gym for like an hour. And that's, yeah. That's actually, I usually go for two hours, but I have, you know, I've been training for years. You're, you're used to it. I mean, you saw how much I can actually, like, lift and stuff. I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting given um, upper body is uh, my least favorite day because, uh, you know, shoulders and back and stuff is my, like, problem area. I know people are probably surprised at that given that everyone comments on how beefy my arms are, but I have past injuries with my shoulders. Like, I, both of my arms got pulled out of my sockets when I was younger. Gotcha. And, oh, nice. Um, and you won. Yeah, fuck and, you. And oh, it's, it's a penguin. And it's, a, and it's the thing that I've been building up muscle, and I'm actually really proud of how far I've come so far, even though, you know, some people may look at it and then look at my uh, lower body and how much I can hit, do, like, deadlifts and all that stuff and be confused. But it's like, you know, I'm, I'm building it up, and I'm very proud of it. Yeah. 
I'm not where I want to be, but I'm proud of how far I've come. Yeah. My my big goal is by the end of the year, I can do at least one unassisted pull-up. That is a big goal. And I may not reach it, but the, the it's the journey. Yep. Uh, if I can go on a tangent about fitness to your audience. Go on ahead. Um, because, you know, I, I see people ask me advice of how to get into working out or, um, how to get into exercise and I want, they want to get into exercise and all that. I think the big thing that needs to, uh, that I think will help people get into it is two things. One, you have to slowly integrate it into your lifestyle. You cannot... You can't go cold turkey. I don't... Well, you can't go crash course on it. I, I, I don't like the, like, um... The workout every day program for two weeks kind of thing. Because I feel like that makes people yo-yo. Because I don't think for a beginner that's sustainable. And It really isn't. Because the, the stuff like diet and fitness is a lifestyle. And, and you've got to put it in context with what you can do and what level you are at so doing like a you know starting going once a week and then make, our end goal is to make you go three times a week yeah but we're not at that stage yet and that's okay um but the other thing i think is a lot of people go to the gym for or or diet or do this thing for uh, aesthetic goals to look better and, and that can be part of your journey. If you want to look in a way that you would be more happy with, then that's fine. But I think I've actually gotten better aesthetically and also my body dysmorphia has become lessened because I fo I'm starting to focus less on how I want to look and that's just a byproduct and more of how strong do I feel. Like, strength goals. Like, I don't want to be, like... And, and, you know, there is still a, an aesthetic want. And, and that's just natural. And, but it's more of a byproduct of the strength goals than my apps, than the other way around. Because the idea of, I want to be able to deadlift 200 pounds. Or I want to do an unassisted pull-up. Having strength goals, I think, has made the acceptance of how I look and how my body is changing um, ch change in a more positive way mm -hmm. and also has made the motivation to work out better because you know it takes time to fit an aesthetic goal but to reach a strength goal that you can constantly change and you can improve upon, and you also just feel better doing it. Because you can look great and not feel good. But, it, but you know, there is a certain good feeling to being strong. And I think that also gives you a healthier relationship with exercise, and gives you a healthier relationship with food, and your diet, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I, and I think that's something that we should encourage more in the fitness community. Something else to keep in mind is that, like, I, I think the other problem that some people have whenever it comes to trying to uh, get into workout routines, um, I, I've heard this from a few other people, but it sounds believable. And that is, um, it's when some people, especially when it comes to, like, January for the whole New Year's resolution thing. Oh, yeah, um, they, go to the, they get a gym membership, go for a month, and then stop. Well, not just that. Um, there's some people out there in the in the fitness community, and they will be utter jerks, and they will call you fat and fat shame you so much. You don't, you will not want to go to Planet Fitness afterwards. Oh, uh, yeah. The negative behavior is a very bad influence. I despise gatekeeping fitness. I, I had that recently where some people were like, you are not a true trainer or weightlifter because you go to Planet Fitness. And... I understand that there's a stigma on Planet Fitness because of the whole judgment-free zone marketing and, and past stereotypes of Planet Fitness, but I think what people gatekeep is very toxic because Planet Fitness is one of the most accessible gyms to people, and it because of its price range and the fact that it has a decent amount of equipment, it has free trainers for your membership. like. 
it is a great starting point. Mm -hmm. and, and for some people, it's great maintenance because with a black card membership, you can go to every gym in the country that's Planet Fitness. And I still get results doing Planet Fitness. Will I one day transfer to another gym if I feel like the equipment at Planet Fitness is no longer something that can help me? Maybe. But Shit. I personally like... Damn it! I personally think Planet Fitness is a very uh, good gym and I just despise the gatekeeping. And the gatekeeping is basically the, uh... The... Just, just saying, like, this is... What you're doing is not real powerlifting or fitness because it doesn't fit these certain, uh, prerequisites that these people have established for themselves. Oh, Star Raptor, I'm very sorry about that, man. That happened to me at a Planet Fitness a few weeks ago. Yeah, well, yeah, that, you know what? Fuck those dudes. Yeah, those. fuck those people. Tell them to go... Yeah. Uh, you know, on a, it, honestly, at the end of the day, those people are more insecure with themselves that they feel like they have to put other people down. Because to me, fitness and working out should be like this inclusive thing where we encourage others to reach a goal that they want for themselves. Because you know what? It is a hard thing to, to make a routine out of in well, the first just, place. It's just not the routine. The, the aspect of going to a place where you are, where your fitness level is exposed, where your weakness or strength is shown, where you are in an admittedly vulnerable position. I would have. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, you're in an admittedly vulnerable position because, you know, this is a place where it does rely on your physical form. And that, and that takes guts because there's a lot of insecurity there. And I feel like if we don't make an environment where we just encourage, like, hey, it is a, it is a, it is a great thing that you are trying for this goal. Yeah. Then, ever, then you know, we're just gonna go backwards. And it's, you know, I, I think like, you know, and I, I think, you know, I think that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my, my IQ points are going down by the second. I've been using up all my smart points recently. No, it's fine. Um. Uh, something I like, even though I don't do like wor uh, go to the gym as often as I should, I did l uh, watch some videos that were part of the quote unquote fitness community online. And uh, there's like a couple of names out there, but there's one of which that is extremely notorious. You want me to try now? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, there's one brand or one person who is extremely notorious for having misinformation uh, on um, working out. He goes by the name of V Shred, and the company. Oh, no, no, no. I hate V Shred. Yeah, because he says a lot of misleading information. Well, I don't even know if it's also, him doing that or if it's the corporations like the, telling um, him to say that. His, like, workout programs, which you think would be customizable and how they advertise it, are not. Um, there's actually a new. YouTuber I've been watching. I, his name is like Will Tennyson or something like that. Will Tennyson. He's only started uploading videos a year ago, and he is in, he is entertaining. He mm -hmm. is no BS. He is just a, a really really cool dude, and I like his videos. And I think like because he do he does like stuff like I train like this person and everything, but he also shows his actual workout. He is a person that does like weightlifting competitions and stuff. He is, uh, but he's also just like a down-to-earth, dry humor kind of guy. There's no like forced, you know, forced positivity or I or making yourself look idealistic. <laughs> you know, talking about other members of the uh, fitness community, there's one dude who I watch every now and then. But man, he's like he's so energetic and he sounds like Yago. Uh, he goes by the name of uh, Coach Greg. Mm -hmm. I know Coach Greg. And man, the dude, he goes all over the place calling out on other people. Um, but another one who I watch, and he's uh, he's more straightforward, uh, his name is like Neil Shun. I, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, another fitness person I really like is uh, yeah. Nata uh, Natasha Oceana. I can never get her name right, but she's actually a, a food scientist. Mm -hmm. So a lot of her, you know, food and fitness science and a lot of her ideas and stuff are based off you know, like actual scientific fact and not conjecture, you know, not these fucking drink apple cider vinegar and you'll suddenly lose 15 pounds kind of things. 
it, I, I really uh, like the, that kind of content because it just makes the idea of fitness more approachable and intuitive eating. I, I just really like that stuff. Let's see. Well, how do you know I skipped a whole night at night of sleep, but I actually feel rest and ease after listening to you guys and having the occasion to discuss. Even though I suck at English, I suppose I owe you a huge thanks. Hey, no problem. We're happy to we're happy to be here. Yeah. We're just all vibing. That isn't that all we can really do in this day and age is just kind of vibe together. Some, uh, somebody else who kind of rubbed me the wrong way, like I I wouldn't say he's as bad as V-Shred. In fact, he even called out on V-Shred's idiot, uh, idiot stuff, but uh, he goes by the name of Athlean X. Um, and they, uh, he said a few things like, don't do like burpees or don't do certain moves because it's not going to like help you out or anything like that. Um, but a lot of it is very, I, I think it's a little more subjective in that regard. Um, but there's also like, there's been some like information where he kind of lied to some people over some things. Like, I, I'm not going to, like, go over too much of a tangent there. But there was just, there's a huge number of just, like, fitness-based people who I've been watching. And even when it comes to, like, how much they like to state facts or a lot of, it's, it's best to take them with a pinch of salt. Because something else is that everybody is different. Yeah, and, our body chemistry is different from person to person. And, yeah, so even though what they state can also be fact, it, that doesn't mean it's going to always apply to you. Yeah. But it, it's... It is bet if, if you have the ability, it is always good to go to, like, a registered dietitian or nutritionist to see what you can do and how your genetics are. Because a lot of your physical appearance and how your muscles form and everything is just based off genetics. Some people are not genetically predisposed to have, like, uh, visible abdominal muscles, but that doesn't mean you're not strong. Yeah, I encourage Wii Fit and Ring Fit. I um, just would also say maybe take your time to uh, incorporate some body weight strength training. Because um, one of the general things that is a fact is... Uh, incorporating strength and resistance training to your cardio is very beneficial because um, the thing about cardio is that you will lose fat because it's the most calorie burning but the problem with that ooh that was nice ooh that is not uh, yeah baby oh, oh god fucking fuck you AI 